I'd like to introduce our newest sponsor, Swim Angelfish. Swim Angelfish is an online certification program that strengthens your teaching curriculum to serve swimmers of all abilities. Swim Angelfish will prepare you and your instructors with the skills to teach swimmers with autism, physical disabilities, anxiety, sensory and motor conditions, and more. Learn to teach skills faster and with more comfort with Swim Angelfish. Apply for an only alpha pool product scholarship and receive up to 50% off your certification. Go to swimangelfish.com today to apply. Looking to host your first swim meet or replacing an old timing system? Run a swim meet with ease from your laptop using Superior Swim Timing. You can use Superior Swim Timing with your existing equipment, or they can provide you with a complete timing solution, including deck harnesses, buttons, and starter. SST is fully compatible with HiTech and Team Unify, as well as Colorado, Dactronics, and Amiga touchpads. Go to superiorswimtiming.com to learn more and be sure to tell them I sent you. All right, man, we're on. David Popovich, welcome back to the podcast, man. How are you? Good. I'm good. I'm relaxed and I'm uh, I'm feeling good. I had only one training today in the water. I've been back from Monday and uh, I'm getting into the rhythm, you know, because, uh, yeah, I have to start back over now. Well, so how long did you have off after Tokyo? I had a total of three weeks. And mm -hmm. so in the first week I came home, then I went uh, in holiday for about 10 days and then I spent the rest of it uh, here with my friends in Bucharest. Okay. Hey, do me a favor, just come a little bit closer so uh, yeah. I can hear, yeah. you, hear you just a little bit better. There we go. Perfect. Yeah. So the holiday itself, you had this thing planned, you went away with your friends, to, it looked like you're at the beach, just enjoying life, right? Yeah, I had to disconnect a little because, uh, yeah, it was a lot, but it was fun. But I had to disconnect, I mean, just to keep, I don't know, just to stay sane, you know? Mm. Yeah. Is this the first big kind of extended break you've had in a few years? Yeah, I never stayed without swimming for this period of time, like three weeks. I've had vacations of a maximum of two weeks, 10, 14 days, three weeks. But again, it was different. I never had the Olympics. I never had back-to-back -back competitions like that, especially junior, um, junior Europeans and then the Olympics. Like It was different. And the break yeah. had to be different as well. Was that difficult for you to kind of just turn off or was it overdue for you? You felt like you really needed this? I felt like I really needed it. I mean, I've been feeling it since I was in Tokyo, but I couldn't really think about it because uh, I had to I had to concentrate there, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I definitely felt it. I mean, I had to drag my uh, peak form from Rome onto Tokyo, and I managed to do that, sort of. That was the plan. Yeah, that's something I wanted to talk to you about as well before we get into Tokyo is certainly kind of the lead up to it and 
how you felt like it went, what, what was the planning for that and all sorts of things. But um, just straight off the bat, there's been some talk about you competing in the ISL, swimming for the New York Breakers. Mm -hmm. Did you sign with them? Are you doing this? I will be doing it, yeah. I'm now leaving in a few days, like for the first stage, but I will be leaving for um, the second and the third stage. That if, you will, if we will qualify, you know, because it's not totally up to me. And so if we will qualify, I will uh, compete in the second and third stage. Okay, I'm not, I'm not familiar with the stages. So when, when exactly would you be leaving? So, and I hope I'm not wrong because um, I'm not really up to date with this, but I think I would be leaving on um, somewhere around 12, 12th of November. And then I think I'll be staying for about two or three weeks in okay. Eindhoven for the semifinals. That means right. the second stage. Right. And I think the finals are at the start of 2022 or I, I don't even, I'm not really sure. Right. Yeah, sure. Why did you decide yeah. to bypass stage one? Because uh, stage one would begin um, in very few time. And so I still needed to get back on track like from the holiday right. and everything because right. uh, I started training only two days ago. Right. Sure. Yeah. I, I think there's actually a few people like that right now, but uh, a lot yeah, of them are I heard about, the least. Yeah. I heard about Caleb as well. That he yeah. would do that too. Yeah. 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 It is, I, I don't know much about your short course. Are you any good short course? It seems like the, the, the length of your stroke and the way you swim is not really suited for short course. That's a question I have as well, but I guess we'll live and we'll see. Because I don't know, it will be a new experience. I swam short course before, of course, but only in domestic competitions, like only at Romanian National Short Course Championships, you know? So, I don't really know. But Were you drafted fun. into New York Breakers or was it something you chose? No, I was drafted. I was chosen from the pool of applicants or however it worked. Are you happy with the, the draft? Are you happy to be swimming for them? Yeah, sure. I would have been happy with literally any, any team that would have picked me. And uh, because I wanted to participate, I heard a lot from Robert, Robert Glinta, Glinta, uh, we call him. Mm -hmm. um, I heard a lot about ISL. I heard a lot about how it is, the experience you get, the people you get to talk to, and the races you get to swim. And uh, it got me really fired up. Right. Is your coach going to be accompanying you to the meets? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He will. Right. Uh, I don't think I would have really accepted it if he wouldn't have been. Right. Um, my next question then is, I don't know how much thought or contact you've had with possibly swimming in America. Does this forfeit your chances to compete and swim in the NCAA? I had a lot of contact. Um, a lot of universities contacted me um, even before this whole ISL thing. And uh, I only found out that I probably probably couldn't do both like, I don't know, um, a month ago or a couple months ago before Rome, you know? So I was really stressed. I just found out, whoa, maybe I couldn't do NCAA and also ISL. Cause still to that moment, I mean, up to that moment, uh, NCAA was my main, my main thing. And so um, I had to really think about it, talk to lawyers, talk to people who actually know the system. And it still isn't really, really clear because of all the new rules. But it is entirely possible that I may never be able to compete in the NCAA. But uh, we'll talk about that later. That's the right. whole conversation as well. Yeah, sure. Uh, can you give us a, a clue of some of the schools that you're talking to right now that you're interested in? Oh, a lot of them. Um, I talked to NC, Stanford, Cal, Texas, you name them. But uh, they're all very quality people. And um, yeah, they have the results. I mean, you, you can argue with that. And so that just proves they're good coaches, good people, and it's a good environment. So in, in this instance, then it's definitely still a dream maybe to compete in the NCAA. So and so, and I'm inclined more to a no, to be honest, right. because since I found out that uh, I probably couldn't do both, I just really thought to myself, 
David, what's up with all this NCA stuff? Like, is it really worth it for you? And I had to really reconsider my options because I was facing the decision to either do that or that, um, which I'll say, don't know for sure, but anyways, yeah. um, I had to think of that and I came to the almost conclusion that it's working. Whatever I'm doing now, sorry, my battery, whatever I'm doing now, it's working. So how I'm working with my coach, how I'm working with all my team, how I get along with my family, my friends, the environment, what I see next to me, uh, what I have here is good for me. And so um, I think um, a coach from uh, the States, I don't remember what university he was from, he emailed uh, regarding this, he emailed me something, yeah, we get that. If it isn't, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. Mm. And I think that really applies to the situation I find myself in. Right. Yeah. I mean, especially three years to Paris now, it's not like it's uh, you know, four years, yeah. it's a three year cycle. I mean, you're on the up and up. Um, you're really, honestly, a, a global superstar in, in swimming terms right now. I mean, for me personally, no one has ever come on my podcast and just exploded. I was with you for nine minutes and that thing just went berserk. So, I mean, everybody, yeah, I could help. <laughs> thank you for that. I appreciate it. But uh, now listen, I got some questions here from, from people. I've kind of some friends of mine that uh, want, want some answers here. Are you strictly freestyle? Do you swim other strokes? Are you looking to branch out in any other strokes, any events, or is it just freestyle? Fun, uh, funny thing. When I was in Tokyo, I saw Caleb. I saw how he swam the 100 fly. And I was impressed, of course, like any other swimmer. I saw Christoph, Christoph Milak as well. And I, uh, more jokingly or not, I went to him and I was, uh, you think we could sometimes do, I mean, manage to get to 49 and 100 fly? Like, I'm just curious because you're the coach, you know, plan. And he was like, he sighed and you're going to give me a lot of work. And that was just it. So it's still a question mark. But so fly you know, is definitely a possibility. Yeah, I mean, I I hate training fly. <laughs> it's hard, <laughs> of course, like any other swimmer would say. But uh, I like swimming it in competition because I'm kind of fast at it. Uh, the freestyle work definitely helps because, like I said, I don't work a lot of uh, butterfly, at least not the endurance. I work technique. Uh, we right. we actually work out all the strokes and we work out almost all the distances. Um, up to the mile, let's say the 15 meter, 1500 meters. Yeah. It's an actually, it's an interesting point you brought up. Um, you know, you, you got to watch a lot of different swimming in, um, Tokyo as well. Who was a couple of people that you were impressed with in the way that they competed? Um, not necessarily, I mean, not only in the way that they competed, but, uh, Brent Hayden. I met with him uh, at the cafeteria and I went to him. He commented before on one of my, uh, I mean, some things, posts related to me. So I knew he knew me. So I went to him like, what's up, man? You're a great inspiration. You're huge. And he was like, yeah, thank you. And then went on his, with his way. And five seconds later, he came back. Wait, you're the Romanian guy, right? The fast kid. Yeah, and the guy, well, let's take a picture. And I was like, you want to take a picture? No, I want to take a picture. <laughs> and uh, we That's battled cool. in compliments, you know, and he was a really, really nice guy and plus a legend. I mean, he was before and now he only grew that status in my eyes. Um, some other swimmers, Caleb. Caleb was extremely down to earth. I mean, at the 100 free before, uh, I mean, at the um, preliminaries, yeah, I forgot the word. Uh, we were in the same heat, the last heat. I was on four. No, he was on four. I was on six. And he came to me and was like, yo, congrats. I saw you. Something like that. You have a bright future. I was impressed because he couldn't. I mean, if he wanted to, he couldn't have said he couldn't. Mm. Forgive my English. Um, if he wanted to, he could have said nothing, you know, and just concentrate on his race. But he was just like a small gesture. But for someone... Um, who grew up looking up to these people, it's an, it's an impulse, you know? Yeah, yeah. Two very good people. Brent Hayden, first class man. I, I competed against him myself, and uh, I, I love the guy. Uh -huh. um, you're right with him. Um, now, 
well, let's go back to just before Tokyo, before we kind of touch more on that. Um, how was the planning going in to, you know, this, this double peaking? I mean, you, you swam really fast, you know, before Tokyo, very, very soon be before Tokyo, and then you had to go to Tokyo. So how did you, and, and you actually swam faster in Tokyo in your 200 freestyle. So how were you able to, in a very short time, peak at this competition and then go on to Tokyo and peak again? So to sort of um, build up this peak form, we had to work from a long time ago. That means, I think, and I hope I'm not wrong, from January, like from when the year started, mm -hmm. um, from the first training, we had to work. Like we had a kind of a training camp uh, at our pool, like 80 kilometers a week. And so it was very difficult. And so we trained, but we trained for Rome because at that moment in January, I, I couldn't have known that I will qualify. I mean, I didn't know for sure. And I had no guarantee of that. And so I knew for sure I was qualified at the um, junior Europeans. So we trained for that. We trained so that, that my peak form will be achieved at Rome. And we kind of just thought that, I, I mean, hope that I could qualify. I knew I could, but like I said, we had no good guarantee. So I trained for Rome a lot and I achieved my peak form there. So objective completed, but mm, from Rome, I still, I qualified for Tokyo. And so I had to kind of, like I said, drag that peak form onto Tokyo. And so I managed to do that in the 200. Um, I managed to do it through preliminary semis and final. And, but from then on, I, I felt tired, like I'm not a robot just like uh, Kolesnikov mm -hmm. said in one of his interviews. It happens and um, my objective was completed. I wanted to achieve an Olympic final and so I did. I did too and I even took fourth place. Um, two, three months before the Olympics I wasn't even qualified in the 200. And so mm -hmm. just managing to get fourth best in the world without being qualified two months ago before was just, I don't know, blew my mind. Well, not only that, you, you only just missed the medal by, uh, yeah. what, two one hundredths of a second, you know? Uh, yeah. I think, it, let me see the time here. I had 144.68 and Sheffer was 144.66. So, I mean, yeah. <laughs> amazingly close to the podium. Yeah. Uh, incredible um, swim. Yeah, that's the thing I say to myself. If um, Let me just um, turn the lights on. Sure, on here, go for it. All right, because it's getting kind no of problem. dark outside. Yeah. Hope it works. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Right. There we go. Do you see me good? Yeah, much better. All right, perfect. And so, uh, what, what did I want to say? Ah, yeah. I, I said that to myself, and I'm still saying this to myself now. Uh, maybe if I saw him, I, I like to think I could have probably beat him because I was on one and he was on eight. So there was no way for me to see him. I barely saw Dean and Scott, who were. Um, four and five i think yeah and so uh yeah i mean he was better than me i had a very very good race but still he was faster than me so i guess i just have to learn you know not be upset about it because yeah i mean it was a huge huge objective goal for me like we passed the object objective a lot Sure. I mean, you swam the best time in Olympic final. Not many people can say that, and uh, especially at, at, at your age. So incredible. But so talk to me about this race specifically. What was going through your head in the ready room? What was going through your head behind the blocks? Hmm. So a lot of people ask me, what's my routine at um, the starting zone where, where you get called? You said the name, but yeah. I always forget it. Yeah, like um, a call room or ready room. Call room, yeah. Yeah. I usually listen to music, actually with these headphones. Um, I sometimes just stare at people and sometimes I just uh, do some jumping jacks. Like I don't have a set routine. Um, and, but now at Tokyo, I listen to some music. I stayed concentrated. I hyped myself up and there was really just nothing going through my mind. I like to think that whenever I'm in a very important moment in swimming, like a final or a very important race, um, I don't think about stuff anymore. The stuff is done. I just focus. Like the training is done. There's nothing you can do to it anymore. The preparation is done. 
and at the blocks um i have my lane like i'm not looking at other people and even if i'm looking i'm not actually even if i'm seeing i'm not actually looking i'm not processing that information it's just me a blank noise in my ears and uh and focus and the visualizing i've done before the race what about in a 200 it's very important to get that first 50 right where you don't over swim it you don't you don't under swim it where you, you give too far, too much away so in that first 50 or maybe even in right before you start what are you thinking there that helps you get on the correct pace that you want i think i wanted with my coach to go uh 24 5 i think um, I don't know, just that just comes naturally. Like the first 50 was never a struggle for me, at least not in the 200. At the 100, I still have to get it better. But in the 200, at least for now, I did it just as planned. Like I went out fast, I came back fast and then went all out. That was the little strategy for it. But we had the times written down. Um, I did a personal best by a lot. And we just stick to the plan and it worked. Just, um, it's just a way to show how well our chemistry works, mine and my coaches. I mean, our chemistry. Yeah, did you feel that lane one was an advantage or disadvantage for you in that Olympic final? I guess it kind of was an advantage because um, in the 200, you don't feel any waves. So the, the lane, um, like with the waves it doesn't really matter but because i wasn't one when i was breathing on my right side which i breathed on always on the 200 and the 100 i was on the last uh, last 50 and so i was breathing on my right and i could see almost the whole pool like i was seeing uh, martin malutin the russian guy next to me i was seeing dean i was seeing scott i was seeing the korean guy um but i wasn't seeing the brazilian guy because he was just a little bit too far away and but it helped me because um in that moment it, it's just who is the hungriest will win there's nothing more to it like who is more determined and ready for it in the moment you know you mentioned the korean guy a lot has been made about him um sun Wu hung in comparison to you a lot of people are comparing the two of you you think it's a fair comparison because of maybe your age and the events you swim do you know much yeah. about him? Um, not much apart from what we talked to and we didn't talk about a lot. But yeah, we swim the same events. We have almost the same times. And he is almost as young as me. He's, um, he's getting 18. out of, yeah, he's 18. He's getting out of his juniors now. I mean, next year. Um, so I think it's a fair comparison. And I'm sure he'll be a great adversary in the future. Yeah, I mean, it seems like you guys have got a lot fast. of races. Yeah, a lot of races ahead yeah. of you together. Uh, he's yeah. a little bit yeah. shorter than you. I think 6'1". So. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, but he was cool. He yeah. was, we were at the, um, we were in the call room and, you know, like I said, I was just staring at people. I just wanted to see how they... I, I don't know, I was just looking around. I wasn't quite thinking. So I was yeah. staring around and I saw him and he was like, I was, hey... <laughs> Like, yeah, let's swim fast. And well, you're only point four off the gold medal. Uh, were you surprised that Tom Dean won the gold medal, or that wasn't a surprise for you? Um, not quite a surprise. I mean, I knew he was determined, and um, yeah, I thought there was a flight. Um, yeah, I'm not really surprised that he won it. He deserved it. He's young as well. What is he? Nineteen, twenty? Or am yeah. I wrong? Yeah. I think he's I think he's about 20 yeah. Yeah. So he's young as well. I think he deserved it, but uh I have a picture with him. I mean, one of our photographers took it, I think. And there's me and Tom after we got out of the pull out of the final and I was congratulating him. All the cameras were on him. And so I was next to him and there is it's a really nice shot. I think I'll post it one day. And I just like to think of it as a uh, Olympic champion and future Olympic champion. <laughs> there we go. I like that, man. Yeah. What about your warm up for the 200? Can you talk me through specifically what you do for warming up for your 200? Um, you mean the warm up in the pool, like yeah. what I do before? Yeah. Um, it's 
I don't know. It was quite simple. I did a, um, say, a hundred meter freestyle, a hundred meters medley, two hundred uh, sculling, um, just some underwaters, a little bit, then some progressive fifties, and then some um, worm down. I mean, it's quite easy. But those progressive fifties, alongside with the sculling, are really what get me going, because. Um, it's kind of a progression and you have to get activated. I mean, that's the science my coach has to think about. You know, I don't really stress about it because I just have to swim. So for your 200, what is it about a, a 1200, 1500, something like this? Well, um, no, I, I think even shorter. No. Oh, really? It's maximum 600 meters, I think. That's or it. 700. Yeah. Like, yeah. like I told you, like, 200 warm up, 200 sculling, some underwaters, and four progressive 50s, and then some 200 one. Oh, we keep so it yeah, simple yeah. because we believe in this principle that uh, that I'm already loaded. Like I have it in me, and uh, the training is done, the visualization is done, um, because we work on that as well, and I've gone through all the the nerves. I just have to get my muscles going, get activated, and then put it all into perspective, swimming. What do you mean by visualization? What do you, what do, you do for visualization? Literally sit in a bed, um, lights off, eyes closed, door locked. Um, I just like to know that no one can come like right when I'm in the, that moment. And um, I just, think about the race like this is something Phelps has talked a lot of has talked a lot of um, something that my coach taught me from when I was little like taught us all of his kids it's just if you can manage to imagine the moment properly with all the details um, there's no way you can fail and wow. can you still hear me uh, you can yeah hear me. I for heard sure yeah from the, yeah sorry and so I just think of how the how the blocks will feel, how will they sound, how will the floor be, um, just how my name will be heard in the arena, how the crowd will cheer. Even though it was a very small crowd composed of only swimmers and coaches, um, I still imagine the roaring crowd that the Olympics would give me in a normal way, but the pandemic kind of blew that. But from every little detail, because if you can manage to do that, you can swim your own race, like no need to look at anyone else. Wow, that's that's great detail. And then it's usually a much more experienced athlete who has a grasp of that. So to, to have that at a young age is um, a huge advantage for you. Obviously, it's working. Were there any surprises at all uh, for at least the 200 freestyle? I mean, you've, you've visualized this, you've heard it, you've felt it, you've smelt it. And then you go out and execute. Were, were there any surprises? I just knew I was going really fast, like on the first 50 and on the third one, when I had the, um, the people right next to me, because uh, when I was swimming on the, I was swimming on my right side. And so I was very close to the edge of the pool. And so I was seeing all the photographers, I was seeing the crowd, the Americans, they were a lot. And I just thought of myself when I saw the photographers, oh, uh, I know I'm going fast. They're probably taking some pictures of me as well. And I just remembered of the people at home watching me who, who woke up, a lot of people who woke up at 4 a.m. to watch me. And so that really pushed me and made me even hungrier. Like, I was going fast, but that gave me a boost, you know? So right. that, was the, that was what I was thinking. There were no surprises. I went in, I did my race. I felt very good. And when I saw that I took fourth place, I was like, Okay, fourth place, that's very good. And then I looked at, uh, I saw the difference between me and the third one. I saw, okay, two 100s. And I said to myself, uh, okay, maybe maybe an Olympic medal was was maybe just too much. And uh, yeah, I just thought of myself that next time will be gold at the Olympics. There's no... There's no doubt about that. So maybe a fourth place for now is just exactly what I needed. Well, I think I, I think I sent you a message that uh, P 
Peter van den Hugenbaan in his first uh, Olympics in 96, finished fourth in the 200 and then uh, went on to, to get victory at his next Olympics in the 200. So I, I, I don't doubt that uh, that the future yeah. looks very good for you too. Maybe history will be made again, or at least repeated. Yeah, I agree. Now listen, the 100 though, so look, it's hard to say it was a disappointing uh, performance. You, you finished... Uh, in the final, seventh place, I believe. You just didn't swim your best time in that final. And you talked about fatigue. Was that something that you definitely felt leading into that final? Um, like one thing, I I felt fast, like in the preliminaries, the semis, and the final. Um, the time said otherwise, like compared to what I knew I could do. But I just had to attribute something. I mean because I felt fast, I was kind of confused at first. I asked my coach, but what's happening? I'm feeling really good and I only did a 48-8 or whatever I did in the preliminaries, 47-8, sorry. And he was like, it's normal. You, he didn't want to tell me, he didn't want to tell me then that I was tired, so that not to influence me or anything. Mm. But um, after we were all done, he said to me like, not to panic, not to think of anything bad, it's normal. I was just tired. It was my first back-to-back -back competitions, and uh, I had to go through this so that next time I'll be stronger for this. Right. But yeah, there's just uh, there's a lot of mosquitoes here. Sorry, that's why I'm turning my head around. <laughs> that's all right. Not going crazy. I wanted to be on the balcony. I feel better here. Okay. Was there a difference in the feeling before the race between the 200 and the 100 in, in terms of the tension, anxiety in the call room or anything like that? No, I actually felt more prepared in the 100 as well because I was kind of more confident in it, knowing it was uh, theoretically my best event, or at least until then. So I felt really good again. I uh, Even in the water, I felt really good. But uh, it was a new feeling. I still was confused after I finished. Okay, I finished almost last with this time. Weird, because I, I thought I went out fast and I came back very fast. But time said otherwise, and apparently it's kind of normal. I mean, my coach uh, taught me now everything about it. Did you feel the waves in, the, in this race, in the final, in Olympic 100 meter final, there's big, big waves? Hell yeah. <laughs> um, in, the, in the preliminaries, I totally forgot about that. Like, um, we thought about it. We said, there will be waves. For sure, there will be waves. Like, those are huge people. Um, Caleb, Miresi, and everyone that was near me. Maxime Grusset. And um, at the preliminaries, I just forgot about them, and they shocked me. Um, when I first came out for the second 50, I was like, Shit, these are waves. Um, I wasn't really prepared for them because I forgot. In the semis, we went, okay, let's do a strategy, try and stick to the the lane from where the waves are coming from. Like, you know, just like Jason Lisa did. Um, yeah. When he won that uh, legendary relay. Um, and so I tried doing that and it was, again, a complete failure. Like I was hitting Miresi, he didn't even feel it. Like I was, hey, did you feel me hit you? I hit you and the lane and everything. He was like, no, nah, I didn't feel it. Of course he didn't, you're huge. Um, <laughs> and so I hit that, it was a fail. And then in the final we went, okay. He told me that my coach, Adrian, you're doing your race, swim in the middle, swim how you know it. Don't try and do any fancy strategies because we really haven't worked them out perfectly yet. So, because I wasn't, very prepared for it so i swam my race i tried and um avoided the waves as much as i could um and it was better than the semis for sure but i still have to learn how to get past them or who knows learn how to make them and make everyone's lives harder <laughs> yeah definitely uh you, you want to do that make make the waves don't uh, try and deal with them so um yeah. Is it still a struggle for you to get out at the at the at the top end speed? You know, like Caleb. Caleb gets out real fast and and puts puts a body length on people, and and you're you're feeling that wave if you're anywhere near him. Mm -hmm. Is it still difficult for you to hit that first fifty speed? 
Um, on the first fifty, you don't feel the wave. You feel the wave only. I mean, based off on off of of my speed and his speed. Like, mm -hmm. I would feel the wave only at the, um, before the turn and when I get out. Like, those are the most important moments. And um, yeah, he's a VO two machine, Caleb. Like, he can get, he can go very fast. But unfortunately, I mean, fortunately for me. He comes back slower, like he manages to go out very fast because that's what he's best at. Um, and I mean, it's a very good recipe. The times are amazing for the 7 0. But uh, I think that in the future, if I manage to get, and I will manage to get faster on the first 50, it's just a matter of time. Um, 47 0. Uh, we have bold plans. I'm not going. I'm not going to go more into details. Well, I can imagine the bold plans. I mean, you're already 47.3. There's anything beyond that is bold, so it's quick. But uh, would you rather be, if you had a choice, would you rather be out in 22 or back in 23? No, both. <laughs> yeah. Not I mean, for real. Sure. Yeah, sure. Definitely. For real, for real. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> That's at least a, that's a thought, you know, yeah. that's something we've uh, thought about a little, like for now, we, we take little steps, but those little steps will bring us one day to this. this is back uh, in 23 a reality? Is, it, is that a possibility that, you know, no one's done it. No one's come back in 23, but is it, is it real? Yeah. Yeah. Plain and simple, it is. Like uh, I think Kyle Chalmers. I mean, for sure, he has the the fastest uh, second split. He has twenty four one. I think he did in the Olympics. No. Um, and I think I'm second or third, if I know right. Excuse me if I'm wrong, but that's what I think. Um, so yeah, when I heard that I was uh, amongst the top three best uh, like all time second split i was like okay but that wasn't i can do better i can do a 23 like it's just um it's not arrogant if you can prove it you know sometime sure. oh, in the yeah. future absolutely absolutely were you surprised that the world record wasn't broken in this event particularly in, in the hundred you mean yeah mm -hmm. Um, there was a lot of speculation, like in the world of swimming, that okay, Dressel will beat it, Chalmers will beat it, some lunatics were saying Popovich will beat it, um, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, okay, thank you, but let's just let's just focus on what's real, at least for now. Let's dream bigger when I'm ready again, like, you know. Yeah. Um, but it was just a gut feeling. I didn't think it will be broken. Like there's no one. Um, that's gotten, I mean, except Caleb and, uh, Kyle, there was no one who's gotten close to it. Like, it's a very hard time, Cesar Cielo, yeah, he was very fast. That's, that's just it. Yeah. It'll I go. just didn't It'll think go. it will be broken. Not now. Soon. Yeah. Well, is this, I mean, you've just started back training the new season. Have you talked about future plans yet, or is this something as the season goes you start to talk about? Um, we're just starting to talk about plans, like what competitions are next, um, how we're going to treat uh, gym sessions, cryotherapy sessions, when we're going to talk to our nutritionist, and we're just putting it on paper for now. We, we're not rushing. Um, there's ISL, there's... Um, world short course there's european short course um we have some interesting interesting stuff i mean and so we're just starting it out like taking it small steps because there's absolutely no rush yeah have you done an assessment with your coach on last season have you been able to sit and talk about the things that went well the things you want to improve has, has that happened um the things that went well well um i think we kind of talked that and went through that like on the way after rome um he already told me what i've done good what i've done bad what i can improve what was perfect yeah 
Um, and in Tokyo as well, we had plenty of time when the competition ended to talk about things. Um, and yeah, then after we just enjoyed our um, our holidays because we both needed them. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Now you're back, back into it. Uh, let me ask you a couple of other questions. What's your favorite freestyle drill? Favorite freestyle drill. Okay. So I think the most um, important one, or at least for me, and I, I know a lot of swimmers will relate to that. Um, there's a variation of sculling. So, you know, there's the normal sculling, like you do mm -hmm. like this. I look like an idiot right now, but I'm just trying to <laughs> show it to people. Um, you just start off from here and do it like this, you know, and mm -hmm. then you come back. So like this, and then go back. Right. I just think that's, that's very important and it really helps me. I do it a lot before my hundreds and two hundreds, um, in events, I like meet, sorry. And my favorite drill, I really don't know. I, I just like swimming, uh, the normal freestyle. <laughs> I'm simple. Do you train with a snorkel on very much? No, not really. I mean, I train, but uh, when I do kicking, oh, with, just because it's kicking. easier for me. No. Yeah. What about uh, for, for just some just some basic times? I mean, do you do a hundred kick for time or two hundred kick for time or anything like that? What's your best? Oh, I suck at kicking. I'm not <laughs> good at kicking. I'm not good at pulling like with a pull boy or how's it called? I have no idea how it's called in English. The yeah, thing you right. put. Yeah, all right. boy. the thing that floats, boy, yeah, um, I suck at them. I don't even know my times, but <laughs> uh, we're trying to improve that all the time, like at every training. And I want to improve that as well. Like when I combine them alongside with my technique, efficiency and whatever else there is, um, very fast freestyle comes out. Ben, but when I do it separately, I, I'm kind of bad at it, but <laughs> I just Imagine I like to think about what would happen if uh, if I manage to perfect those because uh, then when I'll put them all together, I think a machine could come out <laughs> without sounding too metaphorical. What about this? Uh, a lot of people love to hear the, the best set you've ever done. Can you give us one set that is yeah. a favorite of yours? Um, I thought. You may ask me that. Um, I haven't thought of a favorite set of mine, but I will shortly. But I'll tell you a very hard set of ours. Um, I don't know if my coach invented it. I think he did because he has a name for it. I <laughs> call it the he calls it the Chernobyl uh, Chernobyl pyramid. You know yeah. Chernobyl from Ukraine, yeah. and um, it goes like this. Um, it's a hundred all out. I mean not all out, but it's a VO two max. Right. It's a hundred VO two. 100 easy, 200 VO2, 100 easy, 300 VO2, 100 easy, and it goes like this till the 500 VO2, 100 easy, and then descending, five times 100 VO2, um, 100 easy, two times 200 VO2, 100 easy, and it descends up to the 100, which is an all out 100. Oh, wow. And so that's a, that's a very hard one, and uh, the last time I did it, um, I think it will be the last time forever. But the last time I did it, um, I had COVID and I didn't know. And so I had some best times. I, uh, I did very good at it. Um, and when I finished the training, I was feeling really, really bad. Like I didn't know I was sick. Uh, I had COVID. And so I just associated the pain with uh, the, I associated the fever I had and everything with the feeling of getting out of that main set, you know? So I took a, uh, I took something for my head, and then it went, uh, it disappeared, the fever and everything. And I was like, yeah, that was it. I don't have anything. I'm not sick. And then uh, later that day, I had a fever again and everything. And yeah, I tested and I was positive. But I'm just really proud of myself because I managed to do some very good times being sick. Wow, he gave you the Chernobyl set while you had COVID. That's uh, that's pretty incredible, yeah. man. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, he didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. But uh, it was a very tough period. Where a few days back from that or a few days after that, I had a 10 times 400 medley. And, oh, not some days after that because I had COVID. Some days before that, yeah. 
10 times That's, 400 IM. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> oh, wow. It's bad. It's bad. It hurts. Uh, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, I know folks did a lot of these. Or at least I've read. Uh, but it hurts. But yeah, but I Phelps do 400 IM and world record holder in the 400 IM. This, that's not you. Yeah, exactly. I, <laughs> I don't like the 400 IM for the record. I don't like it. It's hard. But uh, I think I'll try and do it sometimes for fun. And if I manage to do an okay time, um, it just kind of letting all gates open. Oh, with, wow. uh, with my, um, how's it called? strokes strokes and distances because there's a lot of coaches and people in general in the world of swimming who says oh so, oh, so you specialize now you're a 200 a free seller and a 100 free seller that's what you want to do yeah but i mean don't limit yourself to that right. let's try some butterfly let's try some backstroke let's try some, let's try some medley let's try 400 who knows what's your worst stroke breaststroke yeah how'd you guess that yeah oh, well is. You mentioned flying back, and I know you're good at free. So if you don't mention breaststroke, then you you, not, you don't love it. I managed to do it in the 200 IM. I had a I have a 201, I think, in the 200 IM. So it's a decent time, which would have gotten probably fourth at the Junior Europeans. I mean, in the 200 and in the 400 medley, I managed to do it, but by itself, <laughs> yeah. What about this? What about your favorite sprint set for the 100? Um, for the 100. So we have, a, um, we have a 50 from the blocks. And we have to mimic the, the first 50 of the 100. Mm -hmm. And then I think I have uh, some rest, like a length rest. And then 150 all out, and I have to mimic the second 50 or of the 100. Mm -hmm. And then again, one leg, one length rest, and then one more second 50. I like the second back half mm -hmm. of it. And I think we did this four times, and it's really hard. But if I manage to go under, I don't know, under my best time on that, I know I'm prepared for any meet that's coming because we usually do this set before. Uh, like in an important training period. Right. In practice, Maybe that. What, could, what could you, what are you holding off the blocks and what are you holding from push? I have no idea what that means. You have to simplify it. <laughs> in, this, in this set, so you said you do a 50 from the blocks, for first 50 of the 100. What times are you going in that, in the, in the workout? Wait, wait a second, my... Uh... Your headphones My, going. Uh, is disconnected, but I'll hear you from this. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, if you can hear me, that's okay with me. No problem. So, first fifty. What are you going in that? Um, I don't even know. I haven't done it. I think I go. I think, like in uh, add it up. I think I could go now if I'm training like a forty-six. Oh wow. Well. Yeah, like overall. Like if I had a, yeah, if I had to count it. Yeah. But we, we also do 200s, like 200s decomposed. Right. Um, like a 50 from the blocks and then three fifties uh, from the water. And there I even managed to go a 141.0 at one point. Like 200 at the interval is uh, one minute. And so add it up, 141. So you go four fifties on a minute and add it up. Wow. Yeah. You do that with a suit on? No. Oh, wow. No. I, I usually never train with my suit. Sometimes. Very rarely. But no. Mm. This set I I done it when I went this time I done it two times. First was uh one forty one seven and the second one I really pushed myself like nearly vomiting, but some sets are like this. Um, and I went up 141.0. But, yeah, I mean, there's some things you have to be willing to do. Just it doesn't seem like stuff. there's a, many people in the world that think the, the 200 freestyle world record can be broken. Apart from you, you, I feel like you feel like this thing can be broken, right? Yeah, 
it is very hard. I'm not saying that. I personally think it, it's the most, uh, it's the hardest world record, like out of all the events. Um, maybe Phelps is uh, 400 IM. May becomes near a bitter months, uh, bitter months, 200. Um, I think it's doable. Yeah. Yeah. I just think it's doable, but again, we need some time, and we need. And I said that before, and I really like the expression. Uh, we need time, uh, patience, and passion, and we have we have them all. Me and my team. Do you have any training partners? Is there anyone in your squad that can hang with you in practice? Um, I train with some people. I don't train alone. Um, when I had to train for the Olympics, I trained alone because um, there was no one swimming my events from my country. So there are periods where, where I have to swim alone. Um, and even when I have some training partners, if we have some freestyle sets, uh, I have to go in the front line. If I want to go fast, there's um, not anyone who can hang on to me. I don't, I'm hesitant because I don't want to sound arrogant. I don't like saying that I'm fast, but it's just the truth. There's not really anyone that hangs with me. But um, there are some sets, some longer sets, like 400s, 800s, where um, some colleagues like really push me. Mm. And so I admire them for that. Who's your favorite training partner? Give them a little shout out. Okay, I'll give him a shout out. I didn't want to say his name earlier, but I will. Um, so Vlad, there's this guy Vlad. He's 2005. Very Slavic name, I know. He's 2005. And I don't know, at Rome, he qualified in the final for the 800, I think. I mean, yeah, I know that. And in training, when we have some longer sets, like, I really, he, he's just near me, he's at my shoulder. And I just think that I have that capacity that uh, Robert Finke, or how's his name pronounced, has. Fink? Yeah, Fink. Fink, sorry. Um, Robert Fink, like, if I wouldn't know how to sprint on the last 100 or the last 50, maybe he'd beat me. So he's a fast guy. And... Whenever I train with him, uh, yeah. Oh, that's good. All right, Vlad. Keep it up, Vlad. Come on, man. Push him, push him. Yeah. <laughs> Is this something you feel like you may want more of in the future? More training partners? Is that necessary for you? Or are you okay not having that? So I kind of found a lot of advantages um, with usually training all by myself because I don't usually train with him. And when I train with him, um, there's it's, it's the long sets that we really push ourselves with. Um, and when I don't train with him or someone like him, um, I usually swim alone, which is most of the time. I hope I didn't repeat myself. And I found some advantages like in Rome. In Rome, I didn't really have any competition in the 100 or 200. And so I managed to go very fast um, alone. Like, I had no one to look in the front and to motivate me. It's different swimming alone. I'm sure you know that. Than mm. from swimming with uh, partners. Like, in a meet, in a race, you're more motivated when there's more people. And so, being able to train alone and managing to do that well really helped me in uh, the situation that Rome was. And will help me in the future if, uh, if it happens again, like, if I participate somewhere and I don't really have any competition. Yeah. What about this? Uh, I, I had a lot of compliments from your first, you know, nine minutes that we spoke of how composed you were, how intelligent thinking you are and, and how mature you are for your age, how, um, you know, how respectful you are of, of you know, Thank you. Your, your, your opponents, all that sort of stuff. So, but is it frustrating for you at times to, to know where you're, you're going? I mean, are you in a rush or are you okay being where you are, but knowing where you're headed? So, like I said, we took it, we take it very simply and slowly. We take very little steps. We improve at every training we do. And so 
just based off comments and everything everything that's ever been said nicely about me from the world of swimming and not only I thank you I thank all um, but I usually tend not to read all of these because yeah there's no need for me to read like I leave it I leave them to to other people who want to read them and so to answer your question properly I'm not in a rush I have all the time in the world and I I can't stress this enough. Excellent. Good good answer, man. What about, um, are you finished with high school or are you still going with that? And if you do end up staying at home, do you intend to study in university or anything? Um, I have two more years of high school. Okay. okay. I have the 11th and 12th grade left. I'll start in September. That's how it is around here. Um, so I'll have those. And then uh, I'll have to think. Well, I have to think for, I mean, from before when I finished high school, but I'll have to think if I want to stay in Romania, I want to stay in Europe, or I want to go wherever. But for now, and what I think, I mean, what I incline most to, I think I'll stay here because, um, like I said, I have, it, I have it all for me. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm sure some people, some colleagues of mine, and athletes in general would probably do better in the US or Australia or England or wherever. Um, but for me and from my own personal experience and uh, movement throughout my little career that has started so far and that, that will go on, I'm good so far and I think I'll stick with it. Right, yeah. Well, two, two years is still a fair amount of time for to finish high school yeah. as well. Yeah, so that's good. Um, all right. Well, I think that's about it. Do, do you have a favorite podcast that you listen to that's not swimming? Do you, do you listen to anything like that? No, I, I mean, I, I do, but um, I just turn them on, 10, 15 minutes go out. I mean, if they're not related to swimming, which I know a lot of and like to hear about, but um, I usually just turn them on and I get very bored. Like, even if it's a very interesting subject, which I'm passionate about, if it's not really swimming, I can't really um, relate to it, and I just get kind of bored. I like podcasts. I like the idea, the idea in general, and uh, I'm sure some people would get bored of me talking as well, whether it be it swimming or whatever else. But I want to go on podcasts. They're interesting, and it's not just an interview with basic questions and curiosities. It's it's a discussion, you know. Yeah. Yeah, well, I've I've enjoyed this. In in terms of your stature back home, has it changed for you? Are you are you a superstar back home now? Do you do people recognize you walking down the street or anything like that? I took two Ubers today, um, one to the gym and one from uh, camp to come back from the gym, and they both recognize me. <laughs> um, it's it's fun. I mean, I enjoy it. Um, some people just stare on the street like some are, I know this guy, where do I know him from? Some are, I know this guy, but I don't want to get talking to him, with him. And some are just like straight up applauding in the middle of the street. And I appreciate all of them. And if you ever see me on the street or wherever, just say hi. Just you know, wave. <laughs> there we go. That's a good one, man. Well, get used to it. You're gonna have a lot more applauding in the in the few years coming up. So, yeah, it comes with it. Yeah. Well, um, one other thing I just wanted to talk about. I'm wearing this uh, Kobe Bryant kind of Mamba mentality, and I've heard that your mental strength is is very good. And obviously, you've got composure. Do you work on any type of mental training? No, I just go with the flow, like. If you're not considering visualization a type of mental training, which is which it actually is, if we're yep. being honest. Um, but apart from that, I don't think there's anything I do in particular. I just it's how how was how I was born, how I was educated, educated, the people I have around me, the things I've learned from my coach, um, and my coaches, dryland and everything. Um, and yeah, there are some personalities. I uh, get some of my, um, not really expressions, but mental states from. And Kobe is one of them. Like, um, 
when I was at Rome, I saw a video of him. I didn't know it before then. He won an important game or something like that. I don't really know a lot about NBA, sorry. And he won an important game and he was at an interview and the interviewer was, uh, um, you just won by Villarreal. How come aren't you happy? You don't look satisfied. What's up with it? I'm sure you know it, the interview. It's famous, it's iconic. Yeah. How come you aren't happy? Job's not done, job's not finished. Why would I be happy? And I, uh, I really related to that uh, after Rome because I really exploded in the world of swimming and mass media from home and news and everything because Romania is such a big country, you know? And uh, I really exploded and I just had to think to myself that I have to stay low. Not like I said in Rome when we had the 10 minute interview as well not get lost in the attention and keep my head on uh on my shoulders you know yeah yeah i yeah i, I admire kobe awesome well listen man, i've appreciated for doing any, this sorry sir and for any other nba uh enthusiastic so i also like larry bird oh larry bird okay celtics fan as well yeah larry's pretty good um but look, uh, like I said, man, I really appreciated the time and energy for this. Uh, thank you again. Um, I loved it. I, I just love getting to know you. I think you're a star now, but you're certainly going to be a superstar of the future. So um, keep doing what you're doing, man. And if you ever need anything from my end, feel free to ask. But uh, we'll we'll keep following you, okay? Sure. Yeah, it was my pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, David. All right. Take care, man. Bye. Bye-bye.